Whether it's wrestling during the NBA Finals, Dennis Rodman, the worm is here! Oversharing about his sex life, you have a cartoon's penis. Vacationing with the most dangerous man on the planet, we laugh. We sing karaoke. We do a lot of cool things together. And being arrested over 100 times. I guess I'm surprised I'm still living. Yeah, that's a number way, way, way less than the number of different hairstyles, tattoos, body piercings, and women's clothing he's flaunted over his career. I've created something that people are really fascinated by. There is no denying Dennis Rodman lived one of the craziest lives in human history. And there is no shortage of stories to prove it. Like the time he infamously hospitalized an NBA cameraman. It all started when Dennis got tangled up with Minnesota's Kevin Garnett and tumbled hard into a group of photographers along the baseline. For reasons still baffling fans to this very day, instead of checking in on the photographers and making sure everyone was okay, Rodman proceeded to kick one of the cameramen. So he kicked the cameraman, he was really upset. But yeah, he, he just didn't kick him anywhere. Rodman kicked the dude right in the man berries and delivered it so powerfully the cameraman allegedly lost consciousness. The game was delayed for several minutes, but right from the start, skepticism surrounded the true extent of the injury. Now, now the man acts like he's dying. This is a joke. Regardless, the cameraman and his badly damaged genitalia were medevaced to safety via one of the old school bodyboard stretchers and hospitalized overnight. Despite the man's eyeballs nearly, and I quote, popping out of their sockets upon impact, Rodman insisted the guy was faking the whole thing, but still paid him $200,000 in exchange for not pressing charges. You didn't really do any physical damage. I didn't do any physical damage. You right. just wanted 200000 Right. That's a lot of money. But I mean, Rodman, he was no stranger to physical altercations on the court. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to do anything. I'm ready to go to war. Scuffling with players like Allen Iverson. Uh-oh. And Iverson goes after Dennis. Patrick Dennis, Ewing. But it will not count at all. Look out. Rodman and Ewing. Shaq. Knocks the ball away. Be careful. Here comes O'Neal. Not to mention headbutting other stars like Larry Bird. Now Rodman goes after Bird after Bird threw the ball. Stacy King. There, there it the is, headbutt. there it is, there's the that's headbutt, that's yeah. What? Comedian Norm MacDonald. So I like blacked out for like a minute, and then the next day I had this huge headache, so I thought I was gonna die, you know? And even Spurs mascot, Wiley Coyote. But one night in New Jersey, Dennis took it to a whole nother level. It all went down after Rodman was hit with his second technical foul and ejected from the game. Dennis got a technical foul. He's out of here. Dennis is out of the game. Dennis approached the referee seemingly to ask for an explanation. But in classic Dennis fashion, he proceeded to headbutt the NBA official. And Ted Bernard, oh, 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 oh. Rod the Bod was slapped with a six game suspension and a $200,000 fine. He was right in front of my face and he was yelling, you know, you, you suck, you're terrible. And all of a sudden he just came forward. Yet this wouldn't stop Rodman from delivering more headbutts in the future, only inside a very, very different arena. You see, Dennis Rodman was a lifelong professional wrestling fan. Wrestling, I watched it every Sunday, man, religiously. Because, you know, living in Texas back in the day, that's all we watched was wrestling. That was it. So when Rodman was approached by world champion, Championship wrestling about doing some business. The two time defensive player of the year literally jumped at the opportunity. Soon, Rod Zilla began appearing regularly on WCW television as the newest member of the New World Order. Are you talking about the real hot Rod? Dennis Rodman? The infamous anti-establishment renegade crew of bad guy wrestlers led by the biggest name in sports entertainment, Hollywood Hulk Hogan. But as crazy as it was for an active NBA player to compete inside a professional wrestling ring, the matches always took place during the offseason. So it was never really a problem. Until it was. In June of 98, the Bulls were back in the NBA Finals, looking to win their sixth NBA title in eight seasons. And for the second year in a row, standing in their way was future NBA Hall of Famer Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz. The world watched as Rodman dominated both the boards and Malone in Game 3 helping the Bulls obliterate Utah by 42 points to go up 2-1 to one in the series. Wennington, the only Bull who hasn't scored, so let him do it. Well, the evening is complete. A total humiliation for the Utah Jazz. But what the world 
didn't know was behind the scenes, Hollywood Hogan had been talking to Rodman about their next big wrestling payday. Immediately following the Game 3 win, Rodman hopped on a plane to Detroit, blowing off Monday's team practice and a mandatory media session. This was bad enough, but to make matters worse, no one in the Bulls organization knew where their star player was. It wasn't until 8 p.m. when Rodzilla's whereabouts were finally confirmed. Dennis Rodman is here at the Palace of Auburn Hills tonight for Nitro? Shocking pretty much the entire sports world with an unexpected live appearance on WCW Monday Nitro, alongside Hollywood Hogan, who added to the unfolding media firestorm, saying ever so nonchalantly, There are some things worth missing practice for, brother. (laughs) Yeah, Bulls head coach Phil Jackson was not amused. Is it true that Dennis wasn't at practice today? That's true. (laughs) Is that an excuse to have? No, it's not. I've got Phil Jackson calling me going, where's my guy at? Where's my guy at? I'm going, Rodman, and Phil Jackson keeps blowing up my phone. You got to go back. He goes, I don't want to go back. Rodman stuck around to help promote an upcoming yet-to-be-announced match featuring the two bad boys taking on good guy wrestler Diamond Dallas Page and another lifelong wrestling fan uh, who just happened to be Carl Malone. Yep, yep, the same one. The very player Rodman matched up against during the last two NBA Finals. Rodman closed out the broadcast delivering multiple chair shots to Page before finally returning to Chicago early the next morning. Rodman was ultimately fined $10,000 for his disappearing act. But big picture, this was a joke, as Rodzilla's appearance on Nitro earned him a whopping quarter of a million dollars. He was genius. Rodman continued to dominate Malone in the series, and as rumors of their upcoming match began to leak, it made for a hilarious TV moment when Bob Costas made mention of their upcoming match during the finals broadcast. He and Carl Malone, regrettably, are scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to lower himself to that is anyone's guess. Rodman helped secure Chicago's sixth NBA championship. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship. And as far as that bogus event with Malone, WCW Bash at the Beach was the most watched wrestling pay-per-view of the entire year. But Rodman going AWOL during the finals wasn't his only vanishing act as a member of the Bulls. Uh, they tell me that Scottie Pippen right now cannot push off his left foot. He cannot dunk off of it. With Scottie Pippen sidelined at the start of the 97 season, Dennis was forced to play longer minutes and take on a larger role with the team. By the time Pippen returned, Dennis was completely burnt out and decided that it was time for a chat with Jordan and Coach Jackson. When Dennis wants to tell me something, I know it's not something that I fucking want to hear. Dennis says... I need a vacation. I went to Phil Jackson, I say, Phil, I can get my mind rocking. I want to go to Vegas. I look at Phil, I say, Phil, what do you mean? Vacation. He says, he needs a vacation. He needs some time off to let loose. Like, if anybody needs a fucking vacation, I need a vacation. Jackson approved the unorthodox midseason break under the condition that he returned to the team in 48 hours. MJ still had some concerns. You let this dude go to vacation, we're not going to see him. You let him go to Vegas, we definitely not going to see him. And sure enough, Next thing you know, I'm in Vegas having a blast with a bunch of girls, drinking up my ass off, stuff, da 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 Along for the ride was Rodman's girlfriend at the time, superstar celebrity Carmen Electra. We'd go to his favorite restaurant, then we'd go to a nightclub, then we'd go to After Hours. It didn't stop. What was supposed to be a two-day getaway suddenly extended to a... I think I'm third day. I'm still in Vegas partying my ass, partying my ass off. And then a... Fourth day. I'm partying my ass off, partying my ass off. Who comes to Vegas to pick me up? Michael Jordan. Way to go get his ass out of bed. There's a knock on the door. I said, oh shit, who is it? It's Michael Jordan. And I'm not gonna say what's in his bed, and where he was, and blah, blah, blah. And I hid. I didn't I didn't want him to see me like that, so I like, I'm just like hiding behind the couch with covers over me. Come on, we gotta get to practice. Just like that, less than 24 hours later, Dennis was back on the court playing Utah. Matched up against else than the guy he would defeat in both the 98 NBA Finals and Bash at the Beach 98. Hogan covers, one, two, three! Hogan and Rodman win! As for Rodman and Carmen Electra, well, they would marry less than a year later during another alcohol-fueled bender in Vegas. And according to Rodman, the marriage lasted, I don't know, 10, 15 days. Wait a minute, what? But it was Rodman's wedding in 1996 that had the entire world talking. 
It's a publicity stunt. It is not. Yeah. That, uh, that's Dennis in a wedding gown which he wore to celebrate the release of his memoir. At the time, ESPN's Keith Olbermann called the stunt. It is one of the great self-merchandising performances of the 20th century. In the memoir, which included a nude photo of Rodman's backside on where else? The backside of the book covered a lot of topics that many considered taboo at the time. Well, yeah. Nice crack, huh? <laughs> Dennis wrote about cross-dressing and experimenting with makeup and women's jewelry, leaving many to wonder about the NBA great's sexuality. Even Oprah Winfrey couldn't resist. Are you bisexual? No. You're not bisexual? No. But that's not what fans were told when Rodzilla, or should we now say Bridezilla, arrived in a white horse-drawn carriage for his New York book signing, admitting that he was not only in fact bisexual, but he was marrying himself. Little did I know this, this is gonna blow up. They shut down Fifth Avenue. It wasn't until years later Robin admitted the wedding gown, the announcement of sexuality, and the marriage to himself, which technically isn't really even legal. It was all a publicity stunt. I was in a hotel, I said, what should I do? What, what should I wear? So I just came up with this thing and said, how about I just wear a wedding dress and I marry myself? It just came out like that. They said, Oh, that's great. That'd be awesome. Next thing you know, they got my phone so calling all these designers. And this is a this. The stunt, well, it worked, as all the international media coverage helped keep Rodman's memoir on the New York Times bestseller list for an incredible four straight months. The worm was clearly a pro when it came to self-promotion through the media, which might explain why fellow media maestro and future president of the United States, Donald Trump, took a liking to Rodman. And in 2013, Trump asked Rodman to appear on his hit reality show, Celebrity Apprentice, where he lit up the screen in typical Dennis fashion with plenty of memorable moments. I was born in Russia, Moscow. Oh, I love Russian bitch uh, girls. But what Apprentice fans really remember most was his sudden exit from the show following an embarrassing incident involving the future First Lady. It's all over the place and nobody even noticed. Amazing. How do you spell Melania? Rodman was overseeing an ad campaign for Melania Trump's new skincare line. And, well... I'm seeing a spelling that I don't recognize for her name. Wow. There is a problem. Is a her name was spelled incorrectly. Donald Trump was not amused by the mistake and served Rodman those famous two words. Dennis, you're fired. It's pretty crazy how in a career including kicking cameramen and headbutting referees, the only thing to ever get Rodman fired, a literal spelling error. That's too weird. Despite the public firing by the former president, Rodman's popularity continued to skyrocket with a seemingly endless run of television, movie, and media opportunities. Four best-selling autobiographies and five NBA championships to his name. The NBA legend had pretty much established himself as the ultimate sports celebrity of his time. Life was good for Robin. But back in 1993, despite winning two NBA championships and two Defensive Player of the Year awards with the Pistons, Dennis found himself plummeting into utter despair. He was already going through a bitter divorce and a child custody battle with his first wife when suddenly Pistons head coach Chuck Daly, who had pretty much been like the father that he never had, abruptly left the organization. Where's Dennis going to go to Christmas dinner and Thanksgiving dinner? Who's he going to be able to talk to? Your father disappears. You got to be your own man. You might not be ready for it. Uh, everything was really just unraveling. I didn't want to play basketball no more after that. It was around this time Dennis began having thoughts of taking his own life. And as crazy as it sounds, if it wasn't for legendary 90s rock band Pearl Jam and NBA broadcaster Craig Sager, it actually might have happened. Sager picked up on the sudden change in Rodman's demeanor, and he began to worry the Pistons star might harm himself. So one night, he followed Rodman into a strip club and was stunned to find Dennis with a loaded handgun in his lap. Sager told Sports Illustrated he had the gun, he was going to do it. I just told Dennis how stupid that would be. But sadly, this wouldn't be Rodman's only attempt on taking his own life. Another disturbing incident involving Dennis Rodman. After a call from a concerned friend, police and team officials were summoned to the palace at Auburn Hills. I just drove to the palace. I don't know why I drove there. I mean, literally right there in the parking lot. And I took the gun from the gun rack, got it, put it in my lap like this. I turned the CD on, and all of a sudden, I was hearing this song, and it was Pro Jam. I was listening to Pro Jam, and I fell asleep. When I woke up, nothing but cops helicopters, this, 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 I mean everything. I'm like, what happened? What happened? I forgot I had a gun in my hand. I just totally forgot I was thinking about suicide. So basically, Pearl Jam saved Pearl Jam. your life? Yeah, pretty much. Rodman was changed forever, saying instead of killing himself, he would kill the old Dennis Rodman. 
the Rodman consumed with trying to hide his true outrageous self. I wasn't really trying to kill Dennis Rodman. I was trying to get rid of the old one. Dennis wasted little time unveiling the new Robin, doing it with an all-new team and an all-new look. This came out the blue. We came to San Antonio. A guy from a salon, he said, you want to do something with your hair? I said, well, do, do what you want. I sat there for like two hours. Next thing you know, it was a mohawk blonde. That's where it all got started. This changed the Dennis Rodman brand forever, but it wasn't exactly off to a good start. The two-hour salon session made him 30 minutes late to one of the biggest moments in Spurs history, the official opening of the Alamo Dome. As you'd expect, the San Antonio front office was not amused, but when the worm removed his hat to reveal his bleached blonde hair, the crowd went wild for it, instantly endearing the Texas-born Rodman to the Spurs faithful. Rodman for three. And Platinum Blonde? Well, that was only the beginning. For the rest of his career, Rodman continued to stretch the imagination of what was possible when it came to self-expression through hair color. This, this was the springboard, suddenly freeing Rodman to play by his own rules on and off the court. In fact, had this initial and accidental change in 94 not occurred, the next 40 years worth of utterly insane instances involving Dennis Rodman, I mean, might not ever have happened. You know, things like... Did, did you really get your scrotum pierced? Mm -hmm. But also dating Madonna, nearly fighting NBA coaching legend Jerry Sloan, Commissioner David Stern threatening to throw him out of the league if he got one more tattoo, asking to wear number 69 as a member of the Mavericks, a number banned in the NBA, getting into players' heads by trying to dance with them on the court, finding a way to insult an entire religion. It was a firestorm of controversy set off when Dennis Rodman made derogatory remarks about the Mormon religion earlier this week. Doing a radio interview while receiving oral sex. Oh, believe me, brother, she's doing a cool thing for me. How do you say something? Falling for a girl so hard he got her face tattooed on his face and even once kicking off his sneakers mid-game to, as he put it, take a quick vacation. But Rodman's most notorious vacation was one with massive geopolitical ramifications. <laughs> That's right, Dennis, the worm Rodman, became fast friends with one of the world's most dangerous dictators, Kim Jong-un. Rodman took his first 6,000-mile vacay to North Korea in 2013, but it, it all sort of happened by accident. The Bulls legend had been invited to play an exhibition game and sign a few autographs for a quick payday overseas, something Rodman did often during his post-NBA career. Dennis signed on the dotted line, but not before his agent realized they had agreed to travel not to South Korea, but to North Korea. Now, instead of simply apologizing for the mix-up and calling the whole thing off, Rodman proceeded to brush aside objections from friends, family, even the U.S. government, and take the trip to North Korea. But Rodman couldn't believe what he saw there. 20,000 North Koreans oh my God. in the stadium. They're all in black and white, and all of a sudden, everybody stands up, clapping, 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 and they turn around towards me. Like, I'm thinking they, they are cheering me. I'm saying, who's that little guy right there? Holy cow. They said, that's our Supreme Leader. I said, Supreme Leader what? Ultimately, the two men hit it off, with Rodman making numerous trips over the years, organizing games with North Korean players in an effort to showcase basketball's universal appeal. We call him naive, but friends say despite the criticism, Dennis truly thought that he was doing this for the right reasons, believing basketball could bridge cultural gaps and foster understanding between the US and North Korea. One major understanding everyone seems to agree on. Dennis Rodman leading an arena full of North Koreans and singing happy birthday to the supreme leader. Absolutely crazy. Ridiculous. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Marshall. Happy birthday to you. Equally frightening was the genuine friendship Kim and Rodman developed. Dennis claimed that he could separate Kim the person from Kim the dictator. And this kind of helps explain how Dennis felt so at ease sharing basketball stories, traveling on ski trips, and riding horseback together despite Kim's exhaustive human rights violations, frequent missile testing, and open calls for death to America. But with all the worldwide attention, Diplomat Rodman truly believed he was doing his part to help. 
However, determining whether his actions helped or hurt the cause is still up for debate. What's not up for debate is the sheer amount of pain Dennis Rodman must have experienced when he broke his pecker. Not once, not twice, but on three separate occasions. And the girl is like crying and she's like, oh my God, are you dying? I'm like, I am? The doctor said, okay, great, Dennis, you know, I, I know what that is. He said, you have a contused penis. I'm like, you know, man, I know what it is, but he said, just give me the lamest time. Oh, your dick is broke. Could there be a more Dennis Rodman type story than Rodman breaking his love rocket three times? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more unbelievably crazy NBA stories, keep watching nonstop.